The Clown of the Cave Bear is a 1986 adventure film directed by Michael Chapman. It's based on a series of books by Jean M. Owl. Is that how you say it? Probably. Possibly not. But yeah, basically it's, it's about Neanderthals and sort of early man Cro-Magnon people who were sort of the precursors to, to homo, homo sapiens. Daryl Hannah plays uh, a Cro-Magnon woman who um, is rescued as a child by a clan of Neanderthals. There's an earthquake and her mother falls into a, a crack that appears in the earth. So she's wandering around on her own and gets attacked by a cave lion. And yeah, it's sort of close to death and the clan wander past as they're looking for a new cave to live in. Uh, and yeah, rescue her. As she grows up, it's obvious that she's more intelligent than the sort of average Neanderthal. And that causes a bit of tension within the tribe, like the son of the sort of clan leader doesn't take too kindly to that. But she's sort of protected by um, a brother and sister named Kreb and Isa. Kreb is the sort of shaman of the clan and, and Isa is the medicine woman. Well, Ayla is her name. I don't think I said that, did I? It's basically Ayla's story of, of sort of growing up with this clan. Um, you know, they're suspicious of her because, you know, they, they think of humans as others and, and sort of a threat to their way of life. So, um, but, you know, they, they do allow her to stay and she grows up with them and they learn, you know, she learns their ways. It's her tale of, of living with them and trying to be accepted, particularly by Browd, you know, the son of the clan leader. And, um, you know, women aren't allowed to hunt, but she, you know, she can because she's got skills that they haven't. You know, there's one scene with Kreb where she's, they're like counting stones and he's amazed that she can count. Um, simple times. <laughs> you know, they were easily pleased. Yeah, so this is our, obviously our month of prehistory films, uh, Iceman being the first one. And uh, yeah, I mean, as most of the films we're probably going to do this month, uh, these are films that I've never seen before. Uh, and not really heard before. Yeah, I thought it was quite interesting, this film. It's, it's different to Iceman, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But And it's definitely more Hollywoodized. I think, mm. this one. I mean, it's got that kind of... I mean, I suppose we should talk about... I mean, I've never... Obviously, I've never read the novel, the source material of this. Uh, so I think the author was... So when she, when she came up with the idea, I don't know if she was actually a historian, but she did a lot of research into, you know, prehistory, mm. prehistory man and, and Neanderthals and, and, and everything. And she, she wrote like, I think she wrote like half a million words uh, for her first novel. And so it was, you know, big stuff. But mm. apparently she was kind of very looked down upon at the time because it was kind of a, a bit cliche. I think the, the, the view of Neanderthals being like, you know, kind of, grubby you know, kind of <laughs> slogging around the place and uh, uh, and then this crow this like kind of long legged blonde haired <laughs> blue eyed female uh, as the crow magnon um, kind of went against that and I think there were you know it was it was it was seen as being cliche I mean obviously there was the kind of the, the racist issue was brought into it as well so I think a few anthropologists around the time renounced it mm. um, for being not you know as it maybe it was, you know, and all the research they've done and since done, I suppose. But, you know, it, it, as a film, it's actually really nice to look at. It's very beautifully shot. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, films like this, much like Iceman last week uh, and the ones we're going to do in the next couple of weeks, you know, the good thing with these films is they're all going to be shot in nature. You yeah. Know? There's, <laughs> there's no buildings, there's no cars, there's nothing like that. This is 5,000 years ago yeah. and hence you've got you know and this being I think they shot this in the Canada isn't it yeah yeah. so you've got mountains and you've got you know snow capped mountains and forests and big rivers and lakes and so it looks very beautiful and plus you've been directed this is being directed by Michael Chapman who is mostly remembered for being cinematographer he worked on Taxi Driver and Raging Bull I think he did The Last Waltz I think he did a number of Scorsese films he did direct other films. He did all the right moves. But I think he's mostly known as, as a cinematographer, and it shows. I mean, there's some beautiful scenery in this film. You know, there was moments when they're in the forest and you can see, like, the the sun, the rays of the sun kind of coming, you know, like there's, like, morning mist. And I'm selling it well, I think. You are. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the rays coming through. And it just looked, it looked beautiful, mm. I thought. And and that clearly shows that yeah. he is a cinematographer. Yeah. And when the sort of cinematographer... On the film was Jan de Bon, who of course, uh, of course he was, you know, yeah. Before um, he was a director, that's yeah, that was his his thing, and he did uh, he did Die Hard. Yes, he yeah. did, yeah. yeah, and various other things. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's lots of lots of big names, yeah, um, yeah, attached to this. You know, behind the scenes, we've got Alan Silvestri doing the music as well. 
yeah, lots of big names. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't particularly a success. It did bomb a bit at the box office. Yeah, um, bombed a bit on Rotten Tomatoes yeah, as well. Like. Yes. <laughs> so it's not particularly well loved. I can see why. You know, it's a bit... I don't... I mean, it's only about 90 minutes, so it's not too long. I don't know, I was kind of waiting for, for sort of something big to happen. There was never a sort of a huge event that occurred. But, no, um, I mean, it's, it's... I mean, the difference between, I think, this one and Iceman... I mean, Iceman last week was... There was a there was a plot. Mm. There was a there was a story in there. There was a kind of a beginning and an end. Mm. This one, it's more. It's almost like watching a documentary. This one, kind it's, of. It's mm. almost like. I mean, you know. So so most of these films, and I think one of the reasons you know we, we did this was was the fact that they're non language. They don't mm. have. They're not speaking English in it. Whereas this one does have a narrator. So yeah. there is someone narrating in in English. So they are. They're speaking a language and they're also using a lot of hand signals and that's subtitled in the film. Then you also have a narrator and because it has a narrator, it, it kind of, it feels a bit, a little bit like a nature documentary. Mm-hmm. So in a way, it's just, it's almost just like you're watching these people from afar, you know, going about their everyday mm. activities. And there's obviously, you know, people, uh, you know, there's, there's this great moment in there when someone has a toothache, so he has his tooth ripped out, which looks horrendously <laughs> painful. And then childbirth. I mean, childbirth comes up a couple of times in this mm. film. So obviously nowadays, you know, we have we have good medical facilities now, which can get most of us through, well, not us, but most of <laughs> us, <laughs> most, <laughs> most women through childbirth. Yeah. Um, but of course, in those days, it was you know it was very just squat in the cave and just squat in the cave and hope get it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's not like it is now. No. And so. You know, and there were lots of things like that. There's, you know, man fighting man and, and you know, that kind of king of the cave kind of mentality mm. and, and lots of that. So you're kind of watching, It's kind of, it feels like a study of, of, of that time. Mm. And because it's well shot and it's well acted as well, I think it, it works and it feels quite authentic, mm. I thought. I mean, you know, they're all obviously in, in prosthetics yeah. and you can tell they're in prosthetics. Of course, Dara Hannah's not because she's... Daryl Hannah, and she's long-legged and blonde, but she's also the Cro-Magnon, so obviously she's the more slightly more advanced one. Um, but you, so you can, so it has its flaws, and I think those are its flaws that you can tell it's kind of you can tell it's like a Hollywood production. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, you know, it, it looked great and it was well acted. There's some quite well-known actors in there. Yeah, well, when I read some reviews, quite a lot of people say it's terrible. And obviously, like we mentioned, Rotten Tomatoes hasn't got a great rating on there. So I was like, oh, what's this going to be like? But, you know, it, it was, well, I had low expectations, so it yeah, exceeded those. What it did do is it sort of made me look up stuff about Neanderthals. You know, I know what they were, you know, because they have, like, religious rituals and things like that. Yeah. And I thought, did Neanderthals have that kind of stuff? You know, you, I just think of them as living in caves and going hunting. And that's it, really. I don't, you don't really think too much about it. But, no, they, they, you know, they did have things like that. You know, they had, they sort of... Well, I mean, obviously we don't know a huge amount about them, but what, what you know, um, archaeologists and, and people that have studied it have discovered is that they, you know, they did have, uh, you know, some sort of belief in, in an afterlife of some sort. Yeah, that, that's what it prompted me to do, was to, yeah, to look mean, stuff up. And I, and I did similar things, and I think I, I found myself doing that with Iceman last week as well, and, and that is that, you know, obviously they are, they are, they're different to us, but they're like us, you know, they are, we are from the same from the same line, mm. lineage, you know, it, we've, 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 we've evolved from, from that. Mm. But obviously we all, nowadays, we have feelings, we have emotions, <laughs> we have, well, some of us do, um, <laughs> you know, but we, you know, the interesting thing with life is when you watch a film, all you're seeing is like a, a snippet of that person's life. But mm. life is like, you know, there's many of us, we're all like, you know, oh, we're not, life's so short. It's not. You're here for ages, you know, and all the all the seconds in the days of the hours, you know, that you just find yourself trying to like, well, what should I do next? That kind of <laughs> stuff. But you think, well, did they have that? Of course, they would have had those similar mm. thoughts and emotions and stresses. And, and I think what was interesting about this film at, at the beginning, that, and like you said, you, you had low expectations of it going into it. You know, there's a scene where Ada is a child when she's when she's at the beginning of the film, she's a child, and her, she loses her mother. And she kind of she's kind of wandering around the you know the the outdoors by herself, and this lion, uh, like mountain lion, attacks her, and she's kind of like screaming yeah. and crying, and I kind of I just I don't know, I just it felt too modern to me. But then I don't know. I mean, 
she probably would have you would have been terrified seeing yeah. that as a, as a as a child in those times as well mm. Um, I don't know. Just I don't think it made me think of little things like that. But you know, obviously they did have their own emotions. They had, yeah. I mean, obviously religion. It wasn't the kind of, uh, you know, Christianity or, or Buddhism no. or any of the different religions that we have now. I mean, it was um, what they sort of used to make sense of, yeah. of how the sun rises well, and what I mean, the moon like, is and the stars and just you know everything around them. And, you know, the animal, animal sort of totems have a big theme in the. Yeah, I mean, you know, many people who don't have. Who don't have like a named religion in their life. A lot mm. of people have spirituality in their yeah. life, and it's that. It's that kind of you know, working out where what happens after after when we die. You know, where do yeah. we go, and there's all that kind of thing going on. So I think yeah, every every group of person, every different different age, um, has their own spirituality or their own religion. We all just you know we just kind of go round and round in circles mm. a little bit, and we do evolve, of course. Yeah. But other things don't necessarily evolve. But they evolve no. differently, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, and I found myself kind of thinking of those things. I think while watch, while watching this film and, and last week, week's film, and probably the next two as well. Yes, I, I enjoyed it, and uh, you know, I mean, it's it's not your typical Hollywood flair. It came out in the eighties. It does feel quite eighties, actually. I have to say, it feels. You got a little Joey Kramer from uh, Flight of the Navigator yep. in there. He's, he's in, he's there, in yeah. there. And playing the adult Browd is Thomas G. Waits, who was Windows in The Thing. Yeah, so the whole the whole film, I was like, "Who is that?" Yeah, I recognise that guy. Obviously, he's under you know lots of yeah. The foreheads it makes it difficult, doesn't it? And a the little, beards, a little bit. But I was like, I definitely know that guy from somewhere. Mm. And then yeah, we, we worked it out. I was like, oh yes, Windows, of course it is. I mean, it's it it, it does feel like an eighties film, mm. but I think it's not a typical eight. It's not the typical. It's not your usual film that would have no, come no, out was... of, of into the cinema in those periods, and I think maybe that's why it was maybe flopped. It was trying to do something different, yeah, and it did something different, and uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was it was quite brave to make that sort of film, you know, you know with no um, apart from the narration and obviously a few subtitles here and there, it's sort of no English dialogue in it. No, um, you're, you're putting yourself into kind of more art, yeah, house territory in, in a way. Um, obviously, the the audience is didn't react favourably to it, and that's why they didn't, you know, there's six books, but obviously they didn't make any more. So a few years ago, they were, there was a potential TV series going to um, be made, but it never, I think it was a, they were going to do a pilot, and then it never happened. Um, you know, James Remar, we haven't mentioned him yet, he's in there as, as Kreb. Um, unrecognisable, I had to look up who he was playing, because I couldn't, I thought, Where's, when's James Remar going to turn up? Yeah. That's, and the whole, every time the Kreb was on screen, I was like, is that really James Remar? I mean, he's got you know he's got yeah, one eye sort of yeah. scarred over where he's always been attacked earlier in his life. So you know he's hot, heavy prosthetics on his face, but even then, uh, you know, and a wig and a beard. But I couldn't, I just still couldn't tell it was him. And Isa is played by Pamela Reed. Well, I recognise from um, Kindergarten Cop. She plays Arnie's uh, partner in that. Mm. I mean, as far as obviously the makeup goes, I mean, if you Google you know images of Neanderthals, they do look you know quite different from. From us, so you know, in, in this film, you know, they've got prosthetics on their foreheads because obviously Neanderthals had quite pronounced foreheads, but they still generally look like people. And on average, you know, I think Neanderthals were slightly shorter and stockier. But you know, what 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 can you do? You can't put everyone in a suit or something. So, and we haven't mentioned the the biggest star of the movie, literally the biggest, literally the biggest, which yeah. is Bart the Bear, yeah. uh, which we've encountered before in uh, <laughs> the Great Outdoors. We did, yeah. Um, quite a famous sort of performing actor bear, whatever the professional word for, for that is. Um, yeah, there's a scene where yeah some Neanderthals have to fight a cave bear, and uh, Bart plays that. Roll with a plum. I did recognise him. You said, uh, yeah, because we watched it together actually, and and, and he said uh, that's Bart the Bear, and I was like, oh yeah, I see the resemb- I see it, yeah. <laughs> you could definitely pick Bart the Bear out of a crowd of bears, without a doubt. Um, but no, I mean, again, we know. I think we said this in Great Outdoors, didn't we? That was amazing. Yeah, you know, performance. You could see that the, the actors and stunt people are right with that bear. You know, there's no sort of cra- camera trickery going on for a lot of it. Uh, and again, they're, you know, they're prodding him with sticks, and one of them has this arm in his mouth with like fake blood all over it. And it's like you've got to have balls of steel to yeah, do that. Yeah, and I think. Um, I mean, I think even when we spoke about him in the Great Outdoors, we were we were wondering at times whether the actors were behind glass. Mm. But this one kind of proves that maybe they weren't no. because they were like right up in his jaws. Yeah. In this one, and it was like, whoa, you guys, hats off to you yeah, because yeah. that's some crazy. Because even if he's trained, and he's he's 
harmless, he's still a massive bear yeah, yeah. <laughs> with massive teeth. You know? and he, and, he could just you know, crush you without, you know, yeah, without I mean, even trying yeah, to hurt he, you. He, yeah, so. exactly. Or he could like, you know, get you in his, his, his big old teeth mm. and... Uh, yeah, so... Um, I mean, you know, there's clearly some... Well, I say clearly, there's some prob- probably some sort of puppet work going on and maybe, a, you know, a guy in a suit for various shots. But no, there's plenty of stuff was, where there's where it's definitely a real bear yeah. and there's guys, you know, prodding it and at one point one of them jumps on his back. Uh, no, it's amazing, and it's amazing shot. stunt work. I mean, like you say, if they're, 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 I think there is certainly there's there's definitely a moment where they're you know where they're stabbing him, and, mm. and it's, it's not part of the bear, but the, it's cut together so well mm. that sequence. Mm. You you're like, is that <laughs> no that that it? And it's very well shot. Yeah, I was yeah. really impressed by that moment. It's a very it's quite an exciting scene mm. actually. Anyway, no, definitely, yeah. uh, as it would be. But yeah, it was nice to catch up with old Bart the Bear again. Yes, but so we don't have this on DVD, do we? No. So we did see it. <laughs> by other means um, which we don't usually do but no I mean it's it was released in several countries on, on DVD there's no Blu-ray that I can find in a lot of countries including the UK it's actually cropped so it's a sort of full frame image so I wasn't going to shell out for that because that's unacceptable <laughs> and to import it you know when I when reading the reviews I thought mm, do I really want to spend too much money getting this if it might be a load of rubbish so no I didn't I didn't import it but it's not too hard to find. I think it's probably out of print because all the copies I could find were, and I think the cheapest I could find it was about fifteen pounds. So um, for a DVD, that's you know a bit pricey these days. So um, it's probably out of print. I mean, it's the sort of film that I can see, um, you know, one of these boutique labels picking up, but no one so far no. has done that. So that was the Clown of the Cave Bear. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button up there and don't forget to push the bell for notifications. There's other videos to check out over there. Come and find us on social media and join us again next week for another video.